Hi everyone, my name is Oz, and I'm a game dev evangelist at Backtrace Sauce Labs. So based on my experience, I'm sharing uh, with you some of the best practices uh, that you can uh, that can help every C++ developer, whether you're a student, beginner, or expert, uh, to write better programs, uh, big, uh, better uh, implementation by performing uh, better and minimize errors, uh, and all of this from a performance and test perspective. So if you are to write a great program that performs and doesn't pose issues down the road, then memory management is crucial. And if you, for example, created an object, uh, be responsible for freeing up the memory that was allocated. So I usually tell C++ uh, beginners, for instance, one easy way to find this out uh, is to search for the new, new keyword uh, in your project and then the delete keyword. So if the occurrences don't match, then you probably are not managing your memory uh, effectively and you got some work to do. So make sure your destructors actually perform the work they're supposed to do. Do not leave them unimplemented. Uh, so if you allocated memory uh, in a constructor or elsewhere in, your, in the class, make sure you deallocate them. Uh, if you initialize the system from an external library, for instance, you shut it down in the destructor. Uh, in short, take extra care uh, when you own, own the memory. So if memory management is an issue, you can also consider uh, where needed uh, smart pointers. I think there was uh, a talk earlier in the Back to Basics track uh, that explained how to use smart pointers, and it should be on YouTube as well later. So uh, you could potentially turn what could be a great code uh, into a deal breaker if you do not make complete implementations. So to further illustrate that point, let's say your class has pointer objects. Uh, that are created in a constructor or uh, for which the class has been given ownership, uh, then you would likely need to write a copy constructor, a destructor, uh, and uh, possibly even going forward, uh, you could actually uh, look to implement even comparison operators. So failure to make complete implementations of the code may not be apparent at the onset, uh, but will certainly come back to haunt you later on. If you always code and test in one compiler. I have a tip here for you that can help you detect issues with little work on your end and let the computer do the work for you. So that is, port your code to a different compiler. Uh, the reason is very simple. So not all compilers are written by like the same team and they're not the same. Uh, each compiler's team would uh, have made different choices about warnings and the error detection. So if you port the code uh, to a variety of platforms, one of them could po possibly reveal a problem that you may not have detected in the first place with your default compiler of choice. So by producing a different error or warning uh, uh, by the other compiler. And test and repeat. So if I would say this process has to start as early as possible in the development cycle uh, so that you can reveal the problems much at the beginning rather than at the end. Uh, if you're porting your code to various platforms, then run your regression test on each of the pla uh, ported platforms and do it often. Uh, remember, it becomes much more difficult uh, to recall and fix uh, when there is a large delay between a code commit and an error discovery. So in short, don't delay. And um, good white box tests are those that are written by the person who wrote the code. Uh, this is because that person would possibly uh, know what can go wrong within the system architecture and ensure that the tests are, devol uh, are developed to detect and report such malfunctions. And having said that, still, uh, an imper imperfect test is better than no test at all. Uh, so I'd like to actually uh, quote a wise person named Testivus, if you're aware of, uh, who once said, your code is like clay. So write it early, it's easy to change. Uh, do it later, it becomes hard and diff difficult, just like a clay that aged. So, uh, and good tests are those actually that also fail. Uh, once an intern went to the team lead and said, I deserve a raise. Uh, he asked why. So he said, well, all my tests pass all the time. So the team lead snapped at him and uh, said, if your tests pass all the, all the time, that maybe then you need to write better tests. So yeah, so good tests are also those that fail. Um, and with that, I think um, I would actually uh, wrap up this part in terms of uh, what's to come. I'm leaving you all with this quote, the farmer who does not use a plow is not a good farmer. Some tasks are best done with bare hands. Other tasks are best done with tools. So 
uh, join me for an open content talk on Thursday at 8 a.m. So where I actually show you some performance and test tools that every C++ developer should use in their project.